Hey YouTube, it's Austin. How's it going? Uh, I am here with somebody oh, over over the, over there. Somebody, somebody over there. <laughs> <laughs> this is my sister Madeline. Um, and so this video was not really um, planned. It's not like one of my regular trans and Christian videos. But uh, we got so I got this amazing package from my friend Matt, who lives in Hungary. Hungary. He was like, "Are you hungry?" <laughs> So Matt sent me this giant package of candy from Hungary, Hungarian candy, that we can't read because it's not in English. And it's candy. You can't read candy. <laughs> true. Also true. So we're going to eat candy and um, have a little chat. It's going to be fun. The first candy that we are looking at here appears to be called Balatone or something to that effect. What do I wish I could fake that accent, but I don't even know what it would I know, I don't know how, what a Hungarian accent sounds like. And I won't honest. even try. The good thing about it is that there's 20% more engendic. Uh, so first question, um, let me think. I didn't prepare any questions. That's fine. What did you think when I came out as trans? As trans. Um, I thought that it was cool that you sort of came out in layers, like two layers of people. It was so you that you were like, <laughs> I've made this website, I've compiled some resources for you all. Mm -hmm. True. Um, but yeah, you <laughs> sent an email to family unit, like little family unit first, um, and then after everybody like talked to you and you answered questions and there was some back and forth and I mean people were feeling like a whole range of things, but then after that, then you sent that like informational stuff on to uncles and aunts and extended family. Yeah. You didn't ask me, like, how you did it. You asked me <laughs> how was, I felt. That was a but good But I thought that it was cool that you you were... It wasn't just like, it's time that everybody knows! <laughs> and then, like, I don't know. And not that there's anything wrong with doing it that way either, but I think that it was really good for our parents to process it before, for example, their siblings yeah. knew, because that was, like, a whole other thing. Yeah, right. I think both Julia, our little sis, and I... It took very little time for us to be like, all right, like <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I, not to minimize what it means, um, but I think that Julia pretty much instantly was like, Kay. "Great, I support you. Like yeah. nothing's different. It's all good." And I, I, I don't even remember having any like negative emotion or anything at all. I think it just was like. What is that? What does that mean? <laughs> what is that? I think that that is something that I can understand. And then I was like, I support you no matter what. Like, pretty much emailed back right away. Like, yeah. great job. Yeah. Doing you. It was great. Is uh, not a big deal to me. And I felt responsible for it being not a big deal because it was such a huge deal to some other family members. So Julia yeah. and I being like, Whatever. <laughs> Not everybody. Yeah. I think it was a necessary, like, background noise to yeah. other things going on. That was super nice, because then I could be like, at least I felt like some people weren't freaking out. Yeah, <laughs> totally. All right, so yeah, this is what we got. We got this ba ba baladon. Um, it appears to be some sort of chocolate wafer thing. Yes. And it looks great. And yes. I don't know how to, like, bust into this. You without, can just do it. It's just going to go everywhere. I have to vacuum anyway. Oh, it's the wafers are kind okay. of like blue green almost. Looking. No, no, no! It's like uh... whoa! It smells like chocolate. It smells like uh, tea. like good chocolate though. It's a lot drier than I expected. Look, when you blow on it, little flakes go everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. I like it. I eat the whole thing. This one has cherries on it, so I bet it's cherry flavored. This one appears to be called Sazamba. <laughs> or is that a music note? Possibly. Just Zamba. Could just be Zamba with Izvilag, which I assume is cherry because it's got little cherries on it. That is a fair assumption. What's different about having a brother rather than a sister, or is anything different? Am okay. I just still me? This is a thing that I'm always thinking about. I do not, and this isn't like everybody's the same, like we're all groovy. That's not what I mean at all by this, but like my relationship with Julia, her sister, and my relationship with you are just like I don't know <laughs> no how to say words. It. Well, no, like I okay. My relationship with mom 
will always be surrounded by the idea that this is my mom and I am her kid. Yeah. And that defines the relationship in a very obvious and, like, not very flexible way. Like, that's just what that relationship is. But I don't feel like sisters and brothers mm. are that way. But yeah. that's just, like, to me, because I grew up with, like, we're all sisters, we're all the same mm -hmm. mentality. So maybe I'm just, like... Maybe that is specific to me, and maybe it is specific to people who have a trans sibling. If you all grew up the same gender when you were kids. Mm -hmm. I feel I like our relationship as siblings is more dictated by our birth order than it is by our gender. Oh, like, I am sure. way more a oldest sibling, and mm -hmm. Julia's way more a youngest sibling, and you're way more a middle kid. And, like, that's what defines our relationship to each other way more than our gender. Yeah. Maybe it would be a different thing if I had come out as trans when I was like 10 and you were 8. You know, like yeah. that may have been different because at that age you're way more into like we do things based on our gender roles. Totally. So maybe it would have been like if I was like Clem's age or something when yeah. I came out in like second grade, like that would have maybe made a bigger difference. But since we all have a shared sort of childhood stories mm -hmm. or something and like now I came out as an adult, maybe mm -hmm. it's different. This is the cherry thing that appears to also be covered in chocolate, so I'm into it. All right. Uh, ooh, it's kind of gooey inside. Oh, it's almost like, uh, it's kind of, what's that um, chocolate bar that's got the fluffy? Three Musketeers. It's like Three Musketeers eating almost. Oh, I think this is going to be like like a truffle. Oh, I don't oh, know wait, how no. I feel about that one. No. Okay. This is like when you get a box of chocolates, and you're like, they're all different. What could they be? And yeah. then one of them is a weird cherry one. Yeah, it's like fudgy. The outside is kind of fudgy. And then the inside is kind of chewy. Oh, I don't know if I like it though. I'm not real not big into scene. yeah. I'm not real big into cherry taste. This one is called Bohawk, I think. Oh man, I'm excited for this one. This Sorry. one is also. Cappuccino. Oh yeah, that looks like coffee. This one also says his Vilag on it, um, which I thought was cherry, but appears to not be because I don't is have it any cherries on this. The brand. One. Oh, see that one says it too. Yep. Yeah, so his Vilag must be a, a thing. I'm sorry, <laughs> Matt, I'm butchering all these names. Oh, oh, this is, oh. Oh. <laughs> pardon my Minnesota O. Oh. This one um, smells like uh, chocolate oranges. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> oh yeah, that okay. one, I like chocolate orange. This is, what's that guy? Coffee one. Oh yeah, it smells like coffee. It's like the same thing where it's like this sort of fudge stuff on the outside and then flavor inside. The white part is the flavor part. That's good too. You know, I don't like chocolate. <laughs> we don't have enough coffee flavored candy. Mm. There's like barely any coffee flavored candy. That's true. This one is called Lotto. <laughs> and I think it's walnut because it's got walnuts on it. Or maybe it's like you don't know what it is because it's a lottery. Oh, maybe. Could be. Alright. Honestly, I can't really taste anything. Ooh, that. hazelnut. Is that what it is? I don't know. All right, so you're gonna ask me a question on this one. Yes. Go ahead. Why did you decide to make YouTube videos about your experience or the things that you know versus taking other types of actions? Because I think that a lot of- Like, like blogging or like-, like Or like <laughs> devoting time to like going out trying to change laws mm. or like in ways that people think are more direct. Right, yeah, okay, I see what you mean. Or or, uh... Yeah, I was just talking to a friend about this the other day because they basically were talking about like feeling overwhelmed by all the things that need to change in the mm -hmm. world and they're just like, how can I possibly care about these two million things at the same time? And, like, yeah. How can I change all of these things at once? And I was talking to them and just saying like, I feel like human brains can only handle so much at a time. Like you can only, literally you can only care about so many things at one time. Yeah. So you have to pick the like one or two or maybe three things tops in your life that you really care about and then try to focus in on those things. So when I started making, when I first started making YouTube videos it was just to document my transition basically because I wanted some documentation of that. And then when I started making the trans and Christian videos it was like what can I, what do I have that doesn't exist out there or you can't readily get? And it was like I just finished seminary and I thought I would love, like, because people of faith tend to be one of the hugest uh, uh, blocks for yeah. trans folks, that's where I could work. And 
because not everybody can pay a bajillion dollars to go to seminary, maybe I can put that knowledge out there in a way that's way more accessible for people. Totally. So I was like, okay, cool, what do I have? And then, because that's where, that's what, you know, that saying about, like, you find your calling by finding the world's deepest need and your deepest love and finding out where that intersection is. So, like, I've got something that I can give and there isn't this information out there, so that's what I'm going to do. And doing it on YouTube just happened basically because that was where I saw a lot of trans folks. So it was like wanting to go where the people already were rather than being like, come over here. We're going to try. This one's just called Sport. I can read those. Oh, this one is just like straight up fudge. Hashtag straight up fudge. Oh, no, there's alcohol in there. Uh huh. It tastes like there's alcohol in it, like, like rum or something. Just a wee bit. I don't think we have any chocolates with alcohol in them in the United States. Like, not unless you, like, buy a box of truffles. Like, yeah. Not just in candy bar form. We got one more regular candy bar. It's another one of the Ballantone, but this one has a blue wrapper rather than a red wrapper. So I assume what was it's a that one? flavor. That one was the one that was, like, wafers, like Kit Kat. Oh, yes. <laughs> I like <Yes>. those. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Me either. I, it's, like, cardboard and chocolate. <laughs> maybe this is dark chocolate and maybe this is milk chocolate. Oh. But I have no real clue. This is Dealey. <laughs> milk chocolate and hazelnut cream. Sounds delicious. I could go do that. Check <laughs> out those nuts. It's true. Well, I would have guessed. That should be the title mint. of this video. Those are hazelnut leaves, but looking at that, I would have guessed like mint hazelnut. Wait, what should be the title of this video? Check out these nuts. I forget. <laughs> Something like that. There's like a weird aftertaste. Mm. It's like, it kind of, it's a little bit, um... Too creamy. Too creamy? Yeah, it kind of falls apart in your mouth a little bit. Kind of like, uh, the inside of an Oreo. <laughs> yeah, but chocolate. I can't imagine right now eating more, but give me like 90 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, we're gonna eat these next, and I know what these are. These are Ropogos Sos Panchica. Wow. You give that a try. They look like pretzels. I think they're pretzels. Close. It appears to be telling us... <laughs> what? Your voice did that weird bubble thing. I don't know. It appears to be promising that there are either 40 sticks in here or 40 grams or 40 something. There's 40 on this package. Let me feel of it. <laughs> feel the 40 grams. Exactly. <laughs> When we were kids, did you ever um, have any feelings about me or my gender in that sort of like, we always knew kind of way? Well, uh, oh. the thing is, don't say what they are. Okay. I just bit my tongue. <laughs> These are great. They're not, before you answer this question, <laughs> they're not like salted. They look like pretzels, they are. but they're not salted. I saw a granule. Okay, there's one granule of salt in this package. Um, and I got it. And they're they're mostly just like breadsticks. They're like, like uh, tiny breadsticks. The like crunchy noodles that yes. the ladies put on hot dishes. <laughs> those are um they go actually go in stir fry. They're like those chow hard. Noodles. Yeah, they're they taste like chow mein noodles. Yes. Don't hate them. No, they're good. I eat these. I am eating these. You know I'm eating these. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when you're a kid. You have the vocabulary of the people around you who teach you how to talk and think. And so I don't think that I would have had the ability to even know. Well, obviously not. Like, I, we weren't brought up being like, this is our transgender friend, Schmo. Like, <laughs> that wasn't a thing. A good name. But the term everybody used was tomboy, and that was right. like... Because I only really heard it about you, I mean, not only, but initially heard it about you, mm-hmm. and like you saying it about yourself, mm-hmm. then later on when I met other tomboys, it was like, the relationship was to you, like that was the, mm-hmm. it's like how his dad is the first dad identity you know. Right. So because I already had that term, it became like a catch-all for your personality. Mm. So. But um, you're saying that it was more like... Tomboy was in itself its own sort of entity or gender. Yeah, yeah. So that it was like, it wasn't that I was, or maybe not like a different variety of girl. It was just like a whole different thing. 
Right. I didn't have like an I always knew feeling. Mm -hmm. Like I don't remember having those feelings, but when you came out as trans, after that very, very short, like within that day, those feelings of like, what? What is this? <laughs> like, just because I had never met anybody who came out as trans before. After that, the wheels kept turning, and then eventually it was like, oh! Like, <laughs> this one appears to be some sort of chocolate heart egg. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really cute. It says, Sazamos. Ooh, this one looks like dark chocolate, like, it's not messing around. This is serious. Oh, oh there's stuff in it. Ha <laughs> be coconut. Yeah, it does look like coconut. It is nothing. It tastes of nothing. I think it's just that we expect it to be really sweet, but it's not. This little guy has oranges on it, and it looks like the chocolate oranges that we eat for Christmas. So instead of like waiting to find out if it's similar, or not, let's just smash it on the ground. <laughs> let's see. No, it appears to be some sort of truffle shape. Not to be smashed on the ground. <laughs> Got it. Go figure. Ooh, what? I don't know. Look at this. Look at the inside of this. I have no idea. Is it figgy? I think it, it smells kind of fig-like. It says chocolate um cascolinade. Ch chocolate. Oh no, that's chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a chocolate fig newton. Yeah. Don't Matt right also there. sent this adorable little Tupperware with cookies in it. We're getting down to the end. You gotta get that Tupperware back to him. Yeah, <laughs> Matt, you want the Tupperware back? <laughs> oh, they're so cute little cookies in there. They're like little hearts and diamonds with chocolate on one side. That one's a little hoop. <laughs> a little hoop? <laughs> To Ooh. heart. <laughs> Whoa. Like little cookies you have with tea. I like those. Oh, what what the heck? There's like a little weird... There's what a, is it? I know, there's like some specific taste in them. <laughs> Not good. That's good. I like it. Have seven or eight more to be sure. <laughs> uh, Matt wrote me a little cheat sheet here. Oh! Those, um... The orange one and the heart one are, have marzipan in it. That's what it was that we didn't know what it was. Yeah, we don't have marzipan in our chocolates here. We don't really do marzipan in general. Matt has has given us this uh, handy dandy guide to these ones, which are called Negro. Uh, they are known as the Throat's Chimney Sweep. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> it is eaten both as a regular candy and for a sore throat. Well, thanks for being with me on the channel. Totally. On the I wish I had better throat. nails so that I could be like, watch this without <laughs> feeling horrible. <laughs> <laughs> these look good. He said they're honey flavored. They smell like honey. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. They're just like real honey. It tastes like real honey. I could just smell it. Oh, <laughs> maybe I'll just stick it. <laughs> lick it and stick it under my nose. Ooh, and flowers. You get this sort of taste of like flowers afterwards. Oh yeah. That's that nectar. <laughs> they're so good. These are good. I wish we had these here. We have these here! What? They're right here! <laughs> no, I mean in the U.S. <laughs> these are... We were in the U.S. <laughs> I wish they sold these in the U.S. I feel like we could find them. Okay, well, thanks for being here, everybody. Um, we'll see you back here with the Transit Christian video on November 2nd, I think, is the first Wednesday of the month. Um, and I'm also going to make a quick video at some point about my... Because I'm one month, um, or one year post-op now from top surgery, oh! which is great. But I'm not going to do a one month top surgery video because there's nothing really to say except to show you my chest for one year. Um, so instead, next month I'm going to do a one, a two year testosterone update and mm. also talk about my chest at the same time. Don't so, miss it. It's going to be great. All right. Talking about chest. <laughs> See you later, everybody.